Let's welcome in Michael Rappaport, who joins us. Actor, antagonist, uh, hot take artist, yeah. and protector of all things Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah. You as a New Yorker have some have a beef with me. Oh, yeah. Well, word on the street um, <laughs> is that you called Odell Beckham a loser the other day. Um, I was offended about it. Uh, plenty of New Yorkers were. I, I, I fended them off because they were like, people were like, where is he? We want to talk to him. And, and listen, I have been on this program. Uh, I've been on my own social media platforms screaming and yelling about Odell Beckham screaming and yelling, punching walls, getting into fights with equipment, uh, dropping passes during playoff games. Um, but Odell Beckham is a Ferrari. OK, uh, we need to we need to rev that puppy up every now and then. Otherwise, the Ferrari uh, goes to waste for the last two seasons. And I also was very public and very adamant that uh, Ben McAdoo, the wackadoo, uh, uh, was disrespectful and needed to be fired for the way he handled the Eli Manning situation. That being said, the last two seasons, we've had Eli Manning who can't throw the ball 30 plus yards down the field to a young, sprightly 2019 Ferrari. So, yes, I, I'm all in on e, with Odell and all his, his mishaps and, and the tweeting and the boats and all that stuff. But he, he does have a point in saying, I'm in my prime. I literally can't go over the top. Okay, so, so yes, I was upset with him. Now, where are you from, my friend? I'm from uh, Orange, California. Orange, California. My dad is a life. What my my late father is a lifelong Giants fan. I'm watching the Giants. And my my son's favorite player is Odell Beckham Jr. My dog's name is Odell Beckham Jr. Jr. I don't know if OBJ knows that that he's named after. Uh, I don't think o OBJ cares. Did, didn't he? Didn't he clap back at you? Uh, he did clap back at me. Here's the and, thing. But I, I, did I, not, I don't I did agree not, with him clapping back. I did not. I'm okay with him clapping. No, back. but I'm it's saying, okay. why is he speaking to you? Well, he shouldn't be speaking to you. I'm not worthy of being spoken I'm to? I'm saying you're worthy to be spoken to, but he shouldn't be speaking. Don't you know who I am? Odell is that guy. He shouldn't be speaking to you. Okay, so he, here's what here's what I, the context of what I said is, I do not believe he's a winning player, or he that he puts winning above himself, above his own image, that that's what he's always been about. You mentioned Ferrari. I think that's appropriate. I think he's an amazing talent. He is a breathtaking, just like when a Ferrari drives down the street, you're like, damn, that must be fun. But- the problem with Ferrari is a lot of times Ferrari's in the shop. Mm. Odell's in the shop True. a lot. Okay. True. And, and and here's the thing: you can tell me you're a leader. You can tell me you're about winning, and you can tell me, hey, when we got off to a bad start, and he pointed some fingers at other guys not working hard, and a little bit about Eli Manning and some of the play calling, like there's some accuracy to it. But I would also point out they're playing the Bears. At, with a chance to beat the Chicago Bears at home. He's on the hands team. He's considered to have the best hands in football. Mm -hmm. And the only thing we focus on pregame, maybe in the history of the NFL, is Odell Beckham Jr., one hand mm -hmm. here, one hand. And it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't lay out to get the football, which is his specific job. In yep. football, we've learned the old Patriots adage, do your job. Yes. I think there's... I think there's some hypocrisy in either what you're saying or what you're actually what you're saying, what you're echoing. You're actually admitting Ben McAdoo was right. Eli Manning was washed. You might have not liked his bedside manner, but it was the right move at the time. And that's what they should have done. They should have they should have bit the bullet and gotten rid of Eli Manning or made him a backup and drafted Sam Darnold last year. They didn't. And now they're reaping uh, the, the they're, they're reaping the lack of benefits or lack of rewards from it, as well as Odell Beckham Jr., who is a tremendous talent. But stop saying he's this. We, I, I'm, you're not saying it. He wants to think he's a leader, but leaders... He has to prove it Leaders at this point. do, leaders don't say. He, you're, you're totally right, and, and, and he's no longer... Like, when he burst on the scenes and the fame and the catch and the looks and the blonde hair, I, I think the, the amount of stardom even took him back. No I, I was at a place in New York, like an event with other big names, and when he moved across the room, the only other person I saw move a room like that uh, was Brad Pitt in his prime. Like, the whole room followed him, and that thing can kind of put you on your heels, but now you're heading into your sixth season? Yeah. Now it's like, you're, you, we're talking about, like, what you're going to be. So, I think this is important here, but I, I would be demoralized if game one of the uh, the season comes up 
and he, Eli Manning is starting our court, as our quarterback. I, I'm going to be demoralized, and, and I imagine Eli and the rest of the Giants are going to be demoralized, and it's going to wind up uh, backfiring on, uh, uh, I don't know if he's, a, he's more like a truck. A fast-driving truck, a young Saquon Barkley, uh, who the guy you're filling in for, we had arguments about him being drafted. Oh, well, he was wrong. He's probably listening on the ski slopes. Oh, you were wrong. I don't think he was. I don't think Colin was wrong. Colin's not saying. I don't. Colin's not has not said that Saquon Barkley's not awesome. It's when you're drafting that high in a quarterback-heavy draft. They had a chance to stick a stake in the heart of the Jets, who moved up to get the third spot. We they had a chance. About the Jets. They had a chance. You should be. Yeah. They got more cap space and they got a better young quarterback. They got a plan for the future. Yeah, you're right. The same you're stadium. right. Okay. So and they might get Le'Veon Bell. Too. And they might get Le'Veon Bell. I, I got Bell. it. I, I understand so the, the, it. The, the point is, the point is not that Saquon. No one's saying Saquon stinks. But we're saying you could have had Darnold and you could have gotten another running back. Let me quickly get you to the Lakers last night. Oh. Um, the Rockets fans and Hardens complain about the refs. Should have. Valid. Uh, Le- Le- LeBron is fully activated, sprayed soul glow all over his body, his playoff activation yeah. mode. Um, takes a lot of shots, makes a lot of shots. They win down the stretch. How important was that game for how you look at the Lakers? Listen, I, I feel like the Lakers are going to make the playoffs. Um, where it's last night, I think Luke Walton deserves the credit. Uh, he had them ready to play. Uh, defensively, they played hard and as good as you could play him. They took some key charges, and I think that had that was put in the head by the coaching staff. Um, if he had lost, if the Lakers had lost, we'd automatically be in Luke, Luke, Luke. So I think he deserves some credit for having his team ready after a very tumultuous pre-All-Star break going into the break. They won one game. The calls were were, were bad. Uh, uh, the Houston Rockets have showed that that uh, consistent weakness that they have. They live or die by the three or the layup. And, and when things don't go their way, uh, 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 from the top down, from Dan Antoni, who I really think he needs to grow his mustache back, by the way, uh, to Chris Paul. Yeah, I got to get that creepy mustache. There yeah, has he, to be no, he needs mustache. it back. He, he needs a change. That's like, his, his hair, his Samson hair. Just like Odell needs a change of a hairstyle. Like, enough with the blonde hair. It was cool. We got to move forward. But uh, Dan Antoni, I think he would afford him to do well to get the mustache. Let's stay focused. You, you got to stay. I'm going to keep you focused. Um, they, they, he played well. Um, they got a long road. The, K- the Kings blew a game last night versus the great uh, Golden State Warriors. They're coming. They're, they're, uh, they're not backing down, and they're looking to make the playoffs just like the, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers are. I, I'm going to give you – I'm going to give you – I know you do, you've done sideline for basketball as well. I'm going to give you a little – A multifaceted. A, a, a analyst breakdown of what changed last night. And Reggie Bullock allowed them to do this, but I told Colin last summer, hey, LeBron – one of the things they want to do with him in the finishing kick of his career is can he be a small ball five? And you look at their lineup when they came back and their closing lineup, LeBron was essentially their small ball five. LeBron, Kuzma, uh, Ingram, and Bullock. And then, you know, they use Contavious Caldwell Pope. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll put Lonzo in there as well. And this is a way to create a mismatch so he's guarded by a center because he can't get by small forwards and power forwards like he used to. That is coaching. The defense is coaching. The shots going in or not going in, not really coaching. Mm-hmm. Do they take good shots? It is. I, I agree with you. I thought it was a good night for, for Luke. And I, I do feel like we, we know how this story ends. It ends with them in the playoffs, doesn't it? Like, it's almost, it's almost preordained ordained that that's the way it happens. I, I, think, I think we expect it to be preordained because of it's the LeBron James factor. And, and you know, after what he did in the playoffs last year, ridiculous. that He, 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 he could pull off. He's a miracle he, worker. I, I, have, I got 30 seconds I want to ask you. Okay. If you were to give Kyrie Irving advice, because now people are filming every don't, facet don't, of his don't, life. Don't, don't, don't share things that we didn't know about. We, we didn't know that you spoke to LeBron James and you made amends with him. So now the media is like, well, every time we speak to you, you might give us some some good stuff. We didn't need like when I text you, I text you, Joy. I speak to you. I don't go, oh, I spoke to Joy. I, this is a conversation. Why are you sharing that, Kyrie? And then when people want more, you're like, what are you asking me this for? Uh, we we, we got to run. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd, or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.